Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time. I'm finally back uh, doing more videos. Uh, but unfortunately, I got some bad news. I got rid of my Raffle Prime. Yes. Uh, so why did I get rid of my Raffle Prime? Well, now you know why. So I got myself a new car. I got myself the BZ4X, which is pretty much a Raffle Prime, but fully electric. Uh, so today I'm just going to show you guys around uh, why I got the BZ4X and uh, show you the differences between the Raffle Prime and the BZ4X and uh, I've had the car f for five days now so uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about my experience so let's get to it so let's do a quick walk around of the BZ4X as you can see um, it's taking as much uh, the same space in my garage um, so I usually park my Raffle Prime in the garage and same thing for uh, the BZ4X. Uh, it's coming exactly where I used to have the charger. Uh, so no big difference there. Um, but there is some difference in the cargo space, which is the one thing I'm first going to show you guys. So let's open. First of all, it's much faster than a Raffle Prime. Uh, if you guys remember my first video, on the RAV4 Prime, I was kind of bothered by how long it took to open the uh, the cargo. So this one's much faster. As you can see, I already put the cargo liner. So this does not come standard with the uh, the BZ4X except on the XLE tech package. Um, so there there are four packages uh, for the BZ4X. Uh, there is the L, the LE, uh, the XLE and the XLE with the tech package. So I have the XLE without the tech package. Um, and as you can see, I bought the cargo li liner separately and I installed it. So this is pretty much like the new ones from the RAV4 Prime. Um, so the mats are separate. So for the back seat with Velcro, and then you have the uh, this one, which is separate. So they're not connected. And uh, they did upgrade the Velcro on these ones because I don't know if you guys have the RAV4 Prime ones. The Velcros were pretty tiny and they were coming off after a year. These ones are much stronger and I think they're going to last longer. As you can see, almost similar spaces, for, for just like the RAV4 Prime, uh, but clearly it's slightly smaller because, let me show you, the shape of the BZ4X it's much more pronounced here as in it goes, it's steeper here compared to the Raffle Prime where it continued and went down. So that's why you lose a little bit of space at the top, but if you're not filling up your cargo space to the max, to the brings, you should be fine. Uh, just for reference purposes, let me just measure this for you guys. I still have one hand here, so let me try, try to do this. Okay, so I'm going to try to put this here and try to measure this. So it comes up to roughly, yeah, I would say around 3 feet. Max here, 37 inches, but that's really the max. And if you want to go this side here, I would take the, the least amount here. Let me try to just, uh, sorry guys. I do have a tripod, but I'm just holding it. So you have around 40 inches here. If you go all the way to the edge, which I will try to do here. It is 37. And then if you go to the widest part, you get around 55 from here to all the way here. I don't know if you guys want to know the height, maybe I'll do the height as well. So you get roughly, let me just trade in this up. Yeah, roughly 30 inches here. So it's not a big compromise, but uh, those who do need a lot of space, uh, that might be uh, an issue for you guys. But overall, for all my needs, um, it's enough. It's enough. Uh, the main thing I, I needed to put in was a stroller. Yeah, by the way, guys, we also had had a baby uh, <laughs> since my last video. 
so that's why I was also busy and not uh, been able to make any videos so now we have a stroller that we need to fit in and it fits in perfectly and uh, so before going inside um, I did get a lot of questions how is it without any rear wiper which is one other different from uh, the RAV4 Prime it's amazing amazingly doing well uh, I mean look at this guys I haven't I've been driving in snow and slush as you can see the car is, is very dirty and the windows are barely dirty or they are obviously but it does not get a you know there's no obstruction during winter uh, with this and all tags to this little spoiler lip however you want to call it it literally keeps all the dirt underneath here and also the form factor of the car makes it in, uh, as such that as we don't need a rear wiper so thumbs up to Toyota on that I was worried the first few times and we do get a lot of snow slush mud name it everything in Montreal Quebec and this has been clean like this and I haven't washed the windows guys so this is as is and yesterday there was a lot of snow I think we got around 10 to 15 centimeters and this is the car dirty but the windows are pretty good I've did forget one option uh, which is this one here which is different from the RAV4 Prime now they have the option of closing the car I mean the cargo door or you can close and lock the only difference here is this closes right away this you actually have to press it and you have to walk away from the car and it will lock I tried just locking it and just standing beside it it did not work so that's a feature that Toyota put in um, so right now I'm just gonna close here it's closed but it is not locked and last thing here just like the RAV4 Prime here you have two buttons here one to open and close and the other one if you want to lock it you're gonna also lock and unlock uh, your car with this little button here I don't know if you guys see it that's really small there so there's two of them here and obviously the uh, reverse camera here and by the way not anything better than the RAV4 Prime the quality isn't that great on the reverse camera let's go inside with the back seat obviously like I mentioned guys we do have a five month old baby here um, and why I want to show you this is we tried this in the RAV4 Prime and we tried it in the BZ4X with the seating position in my RAV4 Prime the baby seat, seat would always touch the seat. It would every single time touch the seat and I would have to move forward and sit in an uncomfortable, let's say, position. Um, now I've tried exactly the same way my seating position in the BZ4X and the baby seat being here. And guys, look, there's plenty of space. I'm like not even close to touching it. So as you can see, you get a lot more space in my opinion, you know, in the BZ4X for the uh, for the back seats, and it makes it as such I don't have to you know compromise my seating position. And yes, I do know you know the baby seat you can put it in the middle. Apparently, middle is the most uh, safest position. We like to put it here. Uh, sometimes we even switch to the other side. It just makes it easier for us to get out the baby seat while we're in the garage because the other side is impossible and here it's just easy access. Let's continue. Um, for the XLE model, you do get two charging ports here and surprisingly USB-C coming from uh, Toyota. So kudos on that. Um, for the other models, I believe the L and the LE don't have the charging ports in the back. And for the XLE tech package, uh, you do have uh, heated seats in the back, which the XLE does not have. So that's one that one difference from the RAV4 Prime. Uh, as you guys know, the RAV4 Prime XSE model, which I used to have, had the heated seats and the buttons were on the window switch. Uh, those don't come here on the XLE. It comes only in the XLE tech package. 
So it's a little downgrade from uh, from what I used to have, but not a big deal. Uh, as you can see, the floor is almost flat. Let me try to bring you at the floor level. You do see a little, little hump there, but it's barely noticeable. So if you want to you know, have three people sitting in the back, it is possible and it might be a little more comfortable than the RAV4 Prime. I do also have a panoramic, um, I would say moonroof or sunroof, um, which is fixed. So that means it does not open, but uh, you just have a shade. So you can open and close the shade, uh, but you cannot open this window. Uh, so the sunroof or the moonroof is fixed. Uh, but it's a pretty nice addition because as you guys know in the XSC model the sunroof stopped there It did not continue in the back You do have a pillar here um, I guess it's for The structural component of the car. It was important to put this here uh, It does separate the view if this wasn't here Obviously you would have had a wow effect here, but uh, yeah, it's still nice and uh, whoever's sitting in the back, you know, they still get a nice view from the back. Uh, the lights, they're all LEDs, guys, so you don't have to change them. Contrary to the RAV4 Prime where the first versions were not LED, so we had to change the bulbs, so these are nice. They're not the brightest, but they do the job. And as for the window switch, you only have this to open and close the windows and a cup holder here and some storage. Okay, so let's go in the front. So let me start for the driver's side here. Let me just start by telling you guys they made the same mistake as the RAV4 Prime. These buttons do not light up at night. Well, at least only the window of the driver lights up nothing else really lights up. Very unfortunate from Toyota. They made exactly the same mistake as the RAV4 Prime, which they corrected in the in the uh, following years for the other models of the RAV4 Prime, which is, on, I think, 2022 and 2023. But, yeah. Um, and I can confirm, this is exactly the same window switch from the RAV4 Prime. Uh, it's the same connectors. So I will be changing this going forward because... It's just very hard at night to unlock the doors. I re and I have to unlock the doors when I reverse uh, to let the passengers out. And I struggle most of the time. A lot of you folks are going to tell me, hey, once you start using it, you're going to memorize it. You know exactly where it is. No, that's not the case. It doesn't always, always work like that. It's just annoying and they cheaped out for nothing. Um, and the XSC model, you get the automatic high beam and to open the, uh, the cargo in the back. Uh, you do get in Canada a set of winter tires, no summer tires surprisingly, but I will always uh, I will also be switching these out. Um, as you guys know, I used to have Tuxmat before, um, so I will most probably switch to Tuxmat. They just don't have the model yet, uh, so I'm just waiting for them to make these so I can buy them, because obviously these are not high enough. They're not tall enough. They're, they're not gonna cover anything, so. I'm pretty sure all this is going to get dirty, all those parts here. So let's go inside. So I do get the wireless charger here. Works better than the RAV4 Prime. The RAV4 Prime, I think it worked one out of 100 times. <laughs> it worked. This one uh, it works every single time. No issues charging it. Um, I sometimes do use the cable. If you want to charge faster, but this is not the, the best way to charge. The fast chargers are located at the bottom, which let's go there and check them out. So you have two USB-C port. You do have a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter here, which I use, uh, which I had a charger. So I just brought this in. And this one does power delivery. So that's why if I want to charge faster, I use this one instead. Um, it's much more real, reliable, but if you're going on a long trip or you just want to do a quick charge, uh, this uh, these two uh, work fine. 
So you do get some sort of cargo space here. I'm uh, not cargo space. I mean storage space, uh, which is not bad. And why is is it not bad? Is because there is no glove compartment on the passenger side, guys. There's nothing. You cannot open this. And the reason is radiant heating. So this model, well, at least all the BZ4X models are equipped with radiant heating except the base model, which is the L model. And the radiant heating is pretty, well, it's pretty good. Heats up pretty much your legs and like your feet. And it is located here. So for that fact, they did not include a glove compartment. Um, I never, I barely use the glove compartment. I usually put my, uh, my manual book sometimes and uh, the lock nuts for the wheels, but except that I wasn't using it anyways as a driver. It was more my wife who would put some stuff here. Um, so we're not really missing it. Um, as for storage here, we also have the cup holders. And a little storage here. I guess you can put your phone if you want, a secondary phone. And you also have uh, some space here. Sorry for the mess, guys. Uh, doesn't go that deep, but you can remove this compartment and it goes a little deeper. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's, uh, oh yeah. And for the rear view mirror for the XLE model we do get the home link so I'm used to the home link even in my RAV4 Prime so we have the home link here and we also have the uh, the dimming functionality which is uh, which is pretty good and we have also all the functions here for the door the lights to open the uh, well, close the shade and open the shade for the uh, the moonroof. And these do light up at night, guys. So, thumbs up to Toyota for actually thinking about this. So, let's start the car and I'll show you the uh, infotainment system. So, this is how the car starts. Even recognizes your profile here. So, that's really good. So, when it recognizes your profile because you can link your profile to your key. Uh, so you have a set of keys and you can link one for your partner, one for yourself, and the vehicle knows all the different uh, the settings. Um, so this is what you're greeted with. So you pretty much you have uh, some sort of information on your range. Um, Toyota still does not show the percentage. Uh, they only show the, it's called a guess o meter So they guess the range that's left on your car. So right now I'm around 220 kilometers without any climate control on and while being in a heated garage. Let's say I do turn on the heating here. Let's say I put auto. I'm at 21. There you go. I'm at 169 kilometers. So, and let me just turn it back off. 219. So Toyota is coming up with an update which will be more precise because it's taking way too much, you know, from the uh, the meter, um, the range because of the climate control, and they're also going to decrease the buffer that they have because they put a big buffer as a reserve in case the you know you're at zero percent and you still need to go to a charger. So a lot of new updates coming in. Um, you do ha have all the other functions here, uh, like the RAV4 Prime when you, you know, put power when you're charging. Um, and you also have all the different options here. So your trip, how much you're consuming here. Um, you have the adaptive cruise control, uh, the all-wheel drive system here. Uh, by the way, TPMS is included in Canada. So finally... So I remember in the RAV4 Prime it was not included. And yes, I know guys, my tires are, I'm pretty sure they're like, the pressure is way too high on the front ones. I still haven't checked that. I got the car not long ago from the dealer. So I'll have to um, recheck that. Uh, yeah, so this is about your trip. 
Um, you have all the different settings for the Toyota Safety Sense 3. And by the way, guys, I just want to show you one thing. RSA is now available in Canada. So that's roadside road sign assist. So that means here at this spot, every time you pass by a road sign, let's say maximum 50 kilometers, a stop sign, it will show up here. It's not 100% accurate, but it does the job. So that's really good. So you don't have to depend on Google Maps or Waze uh, in, the, in the event you, have, you don't really know how, what's the speed limit. Um, most of the time the RSA will show up here with your speed limit and even shows you when you go overboard uh, so you can actually put how much uh, what's the notification met method do you want the uh, if you're two kilometers over the speed limit five ten kilometers uh, so I just left it at the default at two um, I'm not gonna go in all the options but uh, just to show you really fast um, where the menus here and if you don't want to see all this, you just go back to the regular menu here. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Here in the main screen, I'm just going to show you guys. I do have, uh, it has app wireless CarPlay, Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So that's really good because in the RAV4 Prime, we did not have any of those. Uh, we had only the wired one, so now it's wireless. Does it work all the time? Maybe. I would say 99% of the time for me it works. It's always that 1% of the time when it doesn't connect, it frustrates you. Uh, but a simple, I wouldn't say a reset, but just uh, you stop the car and just, you know, restart it and it connects pretty uh, pretty fast. As you could, uh, I turned on while filming and it's still connected to my Android Auto. So it worked. Uh, navigation, it does come with navigation with subscri uh, subscriptions for all the models, which is the L, L, E, and XLE. The XLE tech package does have a three-year uh, trial, which is, uh, which is neat. Uh, since mine is an XLE, I don't have the navigation included. Uh, music. Uh, right now it's Android Auto, so it shows my Android Auto music that's kind of connected, and you can change the sources here if you want. Uh, the radio, my phone, my wife's phone here. Uh, the phone, same thing. I'm con it's connected to my phone, so uh, I can go to Android Auto and actually make the phone calls if I want, or switch the devices. What's neat here is you can also uh, have different information here about uh, your different trips. Uh, the charging schedule. I don't know if you guys remember on the RAV4 Prime, you had to do it on the small screen. Now you can do it here. Uh, you can add your schedules as you want, and it'll start charging accordingly. Uh, if you don't have a smart charger, that is. Uh, there's two ways of doing it. You can do it in the car, or you can do it at the charger. Oh, by the way, guys, I got a new charger. Uh, that will be in another video. It's the Wallbox Pulsar Plus 48 Amperes. I upgrade it, not because the car can take it, I just upgrade in case I get another EV, uh, but at least uh, it's done, it's there. And you have a bunch of other settings here. Um, as you can see, it loaded my profile here. Uh, there's personal info, so you can link your key, your phone, so it recognizes that this driver that has this phone and has this key. So uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, you have Bluetooth devices, you have the general options here. Uh, date, time, keyboard, language. Um, let me go. What else? Notifications. You can even connect it to the Wi-Fi if you want. I don't know why you would do that, but I guess it's there. A few options for these display, the brightness, the camera, uh, the back camera. You can have some setting here. Uh, sound and media here. So you have all the the tuning you can do. And software update, guys. This is pretty neat. It's the first car, I believe, for Toyota that has OTA. So over-the-air updates. So Toyota has the possibility of updating the car without you having to go to the dealer. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're not going to do it for all the updates, but all the minor ones that can actually have some kind of impact on your range or whatnot might be uh, done through OTA. Um, so that's, that's pretty neat. And that's the first ones, I think, um, the first car that actually is getting the OT update. Um, and yeah, you can also customize a few stuff on the, on the car. So the light sensitivity, the door, 
Um, uh, the charging too. What's the max? What do you want for the DC or the AC? I mean, the AC charger, the climate control, and some other stuff here. Next one. So climate control here. So uh, you have the seat warmer, steering wheel. Difference from the steering wheel. Big difference, guys. Let me show you. Remember on the RAV4 Prime where it was only heating here and here? Well, guess what? Now everything is heated up. So thank you, Toyota, uh, for not cheaping out on that. So the whole steering wheel heats up. So thank you. Um, then you have the radiant heating, like I showed you guys. So the radiant heating is heating that is done underneath the steering wheel here. So this is the, the radi radiant heating. Heats up your feet, your leg. Um, it's pretty warm, guys. And it's very efficient, too. So um, I really appreciate this, uh, this option. And you have it, once you press it, you have three levels and same thing for the uh, passenger side. Uh, then you have, let me just put it here so I can show you guys. So if I press auto, you have the temperature control that's done here. So uh, going up and down, you have the different options here. If you want, you know, if you want higher, lower if you want you know the windows your feet your face everything so all the options are here i usually leave it at auto 21 and i sync it for uh for everyone uh same options as the rav4 prime uh, you have the option of closing the vents in the back if you have no passengers so this is very good because since it's an electric car you want to be the most efficient possible so if you have no passengers in the back might as well just block the vents and get all the hot air in the front so I tend to do that when I travel alone. Um, and the rest is pretty much like any other car. Um, oh yeah, and I do use Eco sometimes. But when it's cold, I usually turn it off so I just get the heat as much as possible. And here is the, for the rear windshield and the side mirrors to be heated. So the side mirrors are heated. Uh, this is for the front. And we also have the... Um, the wipers de-icer. So at the bottom of the windshield here, uh, you have little strips that heats up if in, in the event where your wipers are frozen and they have ice. So this does help in uh, winter. Uh, they don't have a volume knob, but they do have buttons here, which is not bad. You know, it's, uh, it's a compromise here. And um, you can turn off the uh, infotainment, uh, I mean the, the music here, just by pressing power. And then you can actually uh, put the volume up and down. As for the driving, um, you have your parking brakes. You have your hold feature, which is when you stop at a red light, um, the car, you know, uh, brakes, and you don't have to keep pressing the brakes. So that's uh, that's uh, that's neat. This is the Regen Boost. Uh, it's almost one pedal driving. Uh, if you guys know, for uh, electric vehicles, you know, most cars comes with one pedal driving. This is as close as you're going to get for one pedal driving. It doesn't fully stop the car, but it brings it to a very low speed. Then afterwards, you can just press uh, the brakes and uh, it stops. So I enjoy driving with this. It's much easier. Uh, but there are some... It doesn't work all the time. The battery needs to be, you know, warm enough. Um, there's a lot of, you know, few par parameters that need to be, like, in order for this to work. So I try it, and most of the time it does work, so uh, I use it as much as I can. Eco mode for the driving. Um, this does save a little bit of range. Uh, it doesn't let you go crazy on the pedal. Uh, I barely use it. Sometimes, if I'm doing long trips, I would use it, but uh, otherwise in the city drive, I would not. X mode. It's pretty much, if you guys, uh, <laughs> if you guys know this, this is from Subaru. So X mode is, you can use it if you have a lot of snow. Uh, and you, let's say, you know, you have to drive very slowly, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of snow. You want to get out from, like, you know, from a parking lot that has a lot of snow. This is, you can use this. So once you press X mode, I'm just going to press it and you'll see the difference here. X mode, snow and dirt. So this shows up. Um, you cannot use this for when you're driving, everyday driving. This is really for short distance at low speed for you to be able to get out if, or if you're going off-roading, this is what you want to use. Uh, if you press it again, it's the same thing, but it's deep snow and mud. 
Um, so this deactivate usually this activate usually uh, the traction control and also the vehicle stability control as well. So it dis disables most of the stuff usually. Um, actually, no, it just VCS off, so vehicle stability control is off, pre collision braking is off. So I'm not sure if traction control is off though. So that's uh, that's one thing. Uh, but you don't use this for everyday driving, guys. It's like I said, off roading, or if you if you're really stuck in the snow or mud, that's where you want to use this. Or else you just go back to regular drive. So I'm just gonna press it again, and X mode is off. And then afterwards, you have the different grip, I believe. So once you're in X mode, you can change. Oh, grip unavailable. Oh yeah, as I can see. There are set some parameters on when it will work and it will not work. Um, so I'll try to get more information on that. Um, and finally, you have the tra traction control here. So uh, let me just turn off the X mode. So one, if you press once the traction control, it just turns off the traction control. So not a biggie. Um, it's off. But if you long press it, so let's say I long press as you can see, everything should be off. So the vehicle, you know, stability control, the traction control, pre-collision braking, uh, I think towing sway as well. Uh, everything is uh, disabled. By the way, no towing available for this guy, for this car. Uh, so it's in the manual. No towing with the BZ4X in Canada. So I just want to precise: in Canada, no towing for for this car is allowed. Uh, I read that in the in the manual. So let me just put this back. Uh, so I think I got everything. Let's just go to the steering wheel. Steering wheel, um, a little different. If you guys saw, there was a yoke version, but this one isn't the yoke version. In Canada, we just get the, the standard one. Uh, the different options for uh, speech control, so you can turn on your Google Assistant or your uh, Siri. Uh, if you have Android Auto or CarPlay connected by long pressing this volume different options you can use for the for the display there um, phone call and everything related to your adaptive cruise control uh, it's here and this is your source for the audio and this is for you to navigate between the between the screens there and for those wondering is my steering wheel blocking my view I would say for short people it might be um, I think I'm five foot seven, um, and I've adjusted my seat accordingly, and I don't have any issues. So I don't suggest you guys look through here. That's really bad. It doesn't really work. It's more position your steering wheel for you to have a better view here, and this adjusts the steering wheel adjusts pretty well. The adjustments can like vary so much, so you have ample space and configurations for you to put it in a way that will suit your driving. Um, it took me some time to find the sweet spot, uh, but once I did, I have no issues seeing the, the main screen. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Let me, uh, I'm just going to show you guys the, the front and the, um, and also open the, the hood for you guys. So at the front, let's start with the side mirrors. No LED signal turning lights here. So as you guys know, in the RAV4 Prime, that's what's standard, I think, on all the models. This one does not have anything at all. Very disappointing on this model. Not even on the tech package, I believe. Uh, they did add a puddle light right here. So there's a little light here when uh, it's dark and you come close to the car. You have a small puddle light. Eh, it's it's okay. But uh, I would prefer some uh, some mirror lights here. Uh, I find it safer. People tend to see more the fact that you know your, your signal lights are on and they can see it on their blind spot versus just having them in the front. Uh, but yeah, small detail. And it's just it sucks that all the new cars have them and it just it doesn't, especially with the amount of price you pay for this car. As for the charging connector, I mean the charging port, uh, it's on the driver's side. Let me just open this. You do have a little light there, so that's neat. At night, it does help. 
uh, you have the option of opening just the AC port. So if this is for level two, or you have the DC fast charging. So um, better than the RAV4 Prime. RAV4 Prime, I don't know if you guys remember, was a little cable, just like a gas tank. And you just take out the cover and you would like clip it on the side here. Uh, this one is integrated to the actual system here. Um, which is one thing which is neat is you can close just the DC if you want, but obviously you cannot use the DC without the top part. And when you close, both actually close. Small detail, but I think it's uh, it's pretty neat. And if you want to open just the DC, it doesn't work. So you, you still have to open this and then after open this one. Uh, by the way, guys, same charging speeds as the RAV4 Prime. That's very uh, disappointing. I was expecting something a little faster, 11 kilowatts. Uh, this has the 6.6 .6 kilowatt uh, that comes standard for the RAV4 Prime. I just want to clarify that. In Canada, all the RAV4 Primes come with the 6.6 .6 kilowatt, guys. In the US, it was different. It was 3.3 .3 and 6.6, .6, but Canada always had the 6.6. .6. So same thing for the BZ4X, it is 6.6 .6, uh, that comes. Toyota did announce having 11 kilowatt coming in, but I believe that those are going to be the uh, 2024 models. Um, and why do I like six? I mean 11 kilowatt versus 6.6? .6? It's sometimes you, you do need to charge faster. Uh, let's say you're going to someone's house or you're traveling and you're staying over at relative's house and they only have a level two yeah okay and you have to leave quickly and you've just got there so it's just easier to have a faster charger um on the car um although you might not be using it every time it's just there and it's convenient toyota chose not to put it and uh, i respect that but i think um it's gonna fit for a lot of people 6.6 .6 will be fine but just would have been nice to put the uh, the extra one I believe the Ionic 5, the other cars did choose um, go towards the 11 kilowatts, so it's just unfortunate that Toyota didn't. Uh, so the front, the XLE gets uh, the LED lights, so everything's LED, guys. You don't have to change anything. Uh, the XLE tech package uh, comes with the matrix light, so you have different LEDs. This one is just a single one. Uh, still good, uh, good performance for the lights. I did get, by the way, guys, the two-tone car. So that means it's the heavy metal color with two tones. That, that means the um, the roof of the car uh, is um, is black, and this is black but painted black. As you can see, it's not the matte color. So in Canada, if you get the two-tone color, your roof and your uh, fenders will be painted, which is really good. But guess what's not painted? The hood. The black part of the hood is not painted if you get the XLE package. Or the sides here. The sides there, they are more brown, but they're supposed to be black, by the way. As you can see, there's a lot of dirt here, by the way, guys. So this gets very dirty. So this is black matte, so not painted. Unfortunate, because we do pay for the paint, you know, for the two-tone, but they decided not to paint this. Uh, this gets painted standard on the XLE tech package. So for someone who wants the roof, the hood, and the fenders painted like this, you need to get the XLE two-tone package. Because another confusion is you can also get the XLE without the two-tone package. So that means your hood will be painted, but not your roof or your fenders. So Toyota is very confusing on this. They should have just made it easier. Uh, but clearly that's not their end game here. Um, so for myself, the uh, the hood is not painted. Um, I'll see if I can do something about that, but uh, that's it for now. Uh, the front is completely flat, guys, contrary to the uh, Raffro Prime. Um, normally you don't, you don't need a grill. You don't need to, to uh, cool down any engine. Um, so yeah, so everything is flat. I did put a uh, protective film on this. Um, I can put you guys the link at the bottom if, uh, if you guys want it in Canada. So I covered the whole bumper, this part, this part, 
this one here too and the hood up until I don't know if you can see it's right here that's where the line is yeah I think you can see the film so it protects the paint because uh, I'm pretty sure traveling on highways the fact that this is flat all the rocks will just hit this um, so it's gonna be easier to clean and it's gonna protect the paint and also the fenders are also up till here uh, have the film I don't know if you guys see it yeah the film is applied and I also applied it for uh, the mirrors as well so this is covered it's just to avoid any uh, chips um, to get on the, onto the paint let me open the uh, the hood and I'll show you guys what's inside so this is the inside of the hood uh, so I still have to use this hook here so Toyota still hasn't decided to put any uh, any hydraulic openings on this so just like the old ways just put your hook there and that's <laughs> it's standing uh, interior is much cleaner than my exterior obviously guys this is very clean I just got the car not, not long ago the only issue I I was you know I was afraid of is all the dirt going inside here because the way it was designed uh, there's a little gap here they did put this but I got a feeling some will go here so I'll see if I can I, I can add a little more here uh, to protect the uh, uh, the inside of the of the trunk and uh, yeah big difference the 12 volt battery that was in the back for the RAV4 Prime is now in the front so uh, that's a little move there and obviously the charging uh, port is at the front here so that's why you see the cables here so this is the cable here the high tension cable that goes from the charging port to your uh, AC to DC converter in the car and you have the electric motor which is at the bottom, bottom here and you have all the other components here so no space for storage guys unfortunately Toyota did not include any space they just wanted to make it a little shorter um, they did a good job so uh, I'll cover this in the next video go into details into the system how to test charge and boost your 12 volt battery as well because these batteries are very small guys I'm just gonna show you yeah this is nothing this is a very small battery guys well you don't need a big battery anyways uh, because you don't use this battery to start the car it just starts the little components but you don't have an alternator in the car you have nothing that requires a big battery but these batteries are so fragile that sometimes they just die and you have to boost them so I'll, I'll do another video showing you guys how to take care of the 12 volt battery that's it folks I hope you liked the video uh, I try to give you guys as much details as I can if I missed something or you guys uh, want more information about anything else please write them down on the comments below uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the, uh, the channel as well I'll be making more videos uh, going forward on how to charge the RAV4 I mean the BZ4X how to test your 12 volt battery and charge your battery in the event um, it's undercharged um, I'm also going to be doing other installations that I've done for the RAV4 Prime uh, previously. So at uh, the, the, the dash cam, I also installed an inverter, if you guys remember, uh, on the RAV4 Prime. And also I'm going to be switching that, that window switch to light, to light up. Um, so yeah, so more videos to, to come soon. Um, and don't like I mentioned, don't hesitate to uh, write your comments on uh, what other videos you think I might be doing. Thank you.